So I'm Erging Duval, I'm a professor of computer science at the University of Leuven in Belgium. And what we do specifically on learning analytics then is um, very much related to visualizing the data that we automatically gather or sometimes not so automatically when we ask students, for instance, to fill in a survey. And then visualizing that in a way that is actionable for a student because we are very interested in trying to use learning analytics to empower students, to empower teachers also. Actually, I'm not at all interested in empowering institutional leadership, but if other people want to do that, that's fine too. What are the barriers that learning analytics has overcome in the last three to five years? Certainly over the last five years or so, um, We've had more and more groups of people doing different types of case studies. Um, I think the first Slack conference is about five years ago. So at the beginning, you know, we barely knew, I think, what we were trying to do and we were figuring out a lot of things as we went. Now I think it has become a slightly more organized domain. Um, so in terms of research on learning analytics, I think you now have clearer research questions could still be better i think but nevertheless it's much improved uh, we have more solid methodologies that are more scientific i would say i think also the idea of using learning analytics has gained a lot of traction uh, we might come back to that a little bit later i think it may be even now become a problem again uh, because it's gaining so much traction and expectations are maybe you know a little bit too high um, certainly on the short uh, time frame, short future, but nearby future. Where learning analytics will be in five years' time? I see like a, a dangerous road and I also see like a, you know, a very promising road. And so if I maybe, you know, give a little bit of detail on both of them, I think that will be my answer. There's a real danger that in two years from now or maybe three years from now, something like that, um, the, the, the overall attitude would be, oh no, not learning analytics. First of all, we tried it and it failed. And secondly, it's so 2013. Why are you still doing this in 2018? You know, now it's fill in some other buzzword. So I, I would be surprised if we would not see some of that. Um, I think maybe even in a certain way, you're already beginning to feel that it's going to go a little bit in that direction. On the other hand, I think there is a very promising road and one that we really have, you know, only just started to walk on or maybe not even, I think. And that is, I, I see, you know, it's also what I'm personally very, very interested in. I, I see a lot of potential in using you know, a much broader gamma, gamma or spectrum of, of technologies from very small wearable technology to very large, like for instance, public displays or things of that nature. And I see a lot of potential there in terms of capturing new kinds of data. For instance, in my own group, we now have, you know, experiments with brainwave analyzers, with mobile eye trackers, with, um, you know, all sorts of sensors that you put on your body that we get from people across the street who do sensor development in the microelectronics center. And there's a, you know, we're still trying to figure out what makes sense to measure and what maybe doesn't make all that much sense. But there's a whole richness of data to be discovered that, you know, we haven't played with very much uh, until now because it was unpractical. I also see a lot of potential in the output side, if you put it on the, in those terms. Sometimes it makes a lot of sense to just get like a small notification maybe on a watch or on another you know, wearable uh, device or nowadays on your phone, I guess, would be like the mainstream thing, uh, way to get it. Um, but there again, we can have this continuity of, you know, from very small to very big devices. We can have this continuity from something you would probably want to do with learning analytics data about yourself in the privacy of your home or wherever it is you are as a student. But there's also other stuff where you would want to share the data with a large group of people, where you would want to contrast yourself with other people and where you maybe would want to do that 
together with these other people. So for instance, we do things now like putting public displays or rather ambient displays in the classroom that give feedback on what goes on in the classroom while it is happening. So it's not about, let me, you know, in the evening review how the session went. While the session is going on, you're getting this feedback about, you know, what you are doing because we often do collaborative learning, how your group is performing and then how your group is performing as compared to it, uh, with other groups. The promising role that I see, one that I think we have not done so much you know, uh, work on yet, is the one where we take a much broader gamma of a much broader spectrum of devices and include like very small things that you put on your body. Uh, but also very big things like this room in a way is a device or could be a device if it's designed as an ambient learning space. Um, and so where we use those both for input and output. And well, that's definitely where we will you know, be doing work in the next, next few years, I'm sure.